You're listening to 89.3 WBLD Orchard Lake and 88.1 WBFH Bloomfield Hills, your radio homes for the Megacast. Today's edition of the Megacast begins now. Welcome to the Megacast, our live local daily TV, radio, and streaming show looking into all things Michigan. I'm Tyler Keith. Today we'll be talking to a number of people about topics of interest and importance to Michiganders like you. Let's get started with what's making headlines today on CivicCenterTV.com's local news page. Our top story comes from Miriam Marini at the Detroit Free Press. The summer season is over, but construction season, <laughs> come on, this is Michigan. When you think of construction in southern Michigan, you probably think of I-75, whose modernization plan continues its progress this fall. Two ramps will close, another two will reopen after previously being closed, and traffic will be cut off to both east and westbound I-696, all as part of a third section of, modern, of the modernization pro project, this time from 8 Mile Road to just north of 13 Mile. This article has a listing of some of the many ways that your commute may be affected by this construction uh, beginning in uh, on this week, Friday. Also, you can learn more by visiting modernize75.com. That's modernize75.com. That's also linked in this article from the Detroit Free Press on our website, civiccentertv.com on our local news page. Also making headlines on our local news page today from Peg McNichol at the Oakland Press. DTE, this time they're planning a power outage one that will affect over 250 customers for about two hours. Today, that outage will occur on Pontiac's east side as DTE crews make electrical systems repairs. DTE is urging residents and business owners alike uh, to prepare by unplugging electronics, especially those sensitive electronics like televisions, uh, computers, and others uh, that, in order to prevent any damage that may occur as repairs are underway and power goes on and back off. And of course, as power is being finally restored, as often when that happens, there are surges. And if you don't have those devices on the surge protector, they could be damaged by the power being restored. For more information or to, uh, for questions and concerns about this, we urge you to contact your DTE Energy provider and uh, the information on your local provider for DTE Energy uh, will be available on your bill from DTE. Finally, making headlines today on CivicCenterTV.com's local news page from MLive's Mark Torregrosa. The ups and downs of fall temperatures will certainly be felt throughout the remainder of this week with temperatures rising into the 70s, both this afternoon and on Wednesday afternoon before a cold rush, I'll say cold front rushes through the local area on Thursday, bringing cold temperatures and a hard freeze on Saturday morning. Average lows on Saturday in the local area will range from the low to mid 30s with population centers in Oakland County and in Wayne County, such as Detroit, uh, at 34 and 35 degrees Fahrenheit estimated. Light precipitation at best is expected this week, particularly on Thursday. So at the very least, it's a dry week. So enjoy the, those final few hours of warmth that you'll get today and maybe a little bit tomorrow. Get those coats and those frost scrapers for your windshields ready and prepare for a cold weekend of tailgating as the Ohio State University drops a thousand points on my Spartans. All those headlines on our website, civiccentertv.com, on our local news page, along with links to COVID-19 updates from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, as well as the Oakland County Health Division. We have a great show ahead on this Tuesday edition of the Megacast. Coming up next, we'll talk to Steve Veneer from the Kirk Gibson Foundation for Parkinson's. This is the Megacast. Let's whoop it up for these moments, made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the cheering going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. In the face of COVID-19, staying healthy is important. And now the same is true as we face the flu. Influenza has the potential to infect millions, putting lives and the healthcare system at risk. Fortunately, it's easy to protect yourself. The flu vaccine is safe and effective, and with COVID-19 still spreading, it's essential. To see how you can hit this virus head on, visit michigan.gov flu. Now that the vaccine is available for children five and up, why do you recommend it? 
kids are part of the community and they can spread COVID. We're seeing both healthy children getting sick from the virus as well as children with underlying health conditions. They can easily bring the virus home to other people that are vulnerable and make them sick as well. This vaccine can change that and keep children safe. It's essential that your children get vaccinated to protect them, to protect your families, and to protect those in the community around you. Let's savor these moments, made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the dining out going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Let's relish these moments made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the festivals going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Can I ask you a question? Why do you want to get the COVID-19 vaccine? I don't like getting sick. The virus will die. It will be easy to not catch it. Keep my family safe and keep playing soccer. Because I love being vaccinated. What's your hope for everyone? I hope everybody gets the vaccine. To keep safe and strong. Be like happy, having fun everywhere. Everyone stay safe and hope you get the vaccine. Let's whoop it up for these moments, made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the cheering going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Welcome back to the MeccaCast, our live daily five days per week TV, radio, and streaming show talking about all things Michigan. I'm Tyler Keith. Learn more about our program by visiting our website, civiccentertv.com slash MeccaCast, where you'll find more information on all of our partnering stations all across the Great Lakes state, including My Michigan TV, and find all of our full programs on demand, both full episodes and each individual interview, civiccentertv.com slash megacast joining us now on the megacast is a board member and managing director for the kirk gibson foundation for parkinson steve anir joins us now on the megacast steve thanks for being with us today oh thanks thanks for having me on appreciate it yeah appreciate having you on as well so first off tell us uh, about your journey to being to being involved with the kirk gibson foundation for parkinson's how did you get in contact with this organization and then of course get involved now as a board member and the managing director well, I, uh, I met Kirk on a golf course and um, I uh, happened to be playing alongside a, a, uh, a group of people and uh, they recognised him as he was coming off, off uh, the last tee. And um, he, uh, he came over and said hello to everybody. And um, I, coming from Australia as I, I have, I didn't know who he was. So I had to go home and Google him and find out what all the fuss was about. And um, from that first meeting, uh, we started playing golf together. I'm an amputee, and he has Parkinson's disease, so we compete pretty uh, pretty heavily together, and we became good friends. And um, I asked him if there was something I could do to help his foundation. I just was very inspired by uh, Kirk and what he was doing to help people with Parkinson's disease, particularly those in Michigan. And um, so from that offer, uh, came more involvement in the foundation, then eventually a seat on the board, and, and now as managing director. And so as managing director, was some of the roles that you covered to help this organization push its message forward and help a lot of people too that are afflicted with Parkinson's disease? Yeah, I think part of um, my contribution has been to help the board and Kirk and his family think about um, how to best um, execute on Kirk's vision. 
And, and Kirk's vision, he really wants to help um, provide hope to people with Parkinson's and inspire them. He's a very inspirational person, you probably know. So um, he, he wanted to crystallise that vision into a plan of action. And so I've been working with the board to do that. And we now have a really clear plan of action that'll allow us to bring activity-based programs to people in Michigan who are living with Parkinson's disease, because we know that activity really helps the quality of life of those with Parkinson's. And there is a real gap between what is provided by insurance and, and the medical industry um, and what is needed by people with Parkinson's disease. So the goal of the foundation now in this area is to fill that gap. So you mentioned, Steve, that not only are you training for a marathon, but you also mentioned you are an amputee and, and you've been an amputee since you were uh, since you were at, at a young age. So training for a marathon, that's that's a daunting task for anybody, let alone someone yeah. that is an amputee. What what let's just start from the start. When did this idea come to your mind of I'm going to I'm going to help this organization that I, I put so much of my heart and my efforts, and my expertise into by running a marathon? So I, uh, ever since I, I lost my leg, which I was 11 when that happened, um, I've kind of been motivated to challenge myself and I'm constantly doing that in, in all aspects of my life. And um, the, uh, there is a group of, of people that run every year called Team 23. So these are people that are inspired by the foundation and, and Kirk's work and want to contribute to it by raising money through joining Team 23. And... Um, and, and running a marathon and challenging themselves. So while I don't have Parkinson's disease, I thought, well, I'll, I'll be doing this on crutches. This is how I spend my life is on crutches. And um, I thought I'd, I would have a go at this and just see whether I can do it. So so that's what I'm going to do. So it's not really running. It's got a more kind of fast walking on crutches. I think it'll take me well over the seven hours that the course is open. So I'll be coming home while the course is being cleaned up, I think, and hopefully I am coming home and making it across that finish line. So uh, I'm just very fired up to do it, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, there are there are now over 80 runners that have joined Team 23, um, and uh, so we've got a great group that are out there, uh, you know, kind of competing on behalf of the foundation. And so, what is the goal with this run of, of yours and others on Team 23 doing this marathon? Obviously, you want to raise that awareness for the Kirk yes. Gibson Foundation for Parkinson's and for Parkinson's and, and for Parkinson's patients and the life that they go through with this with this condition. But you also have other goals as well. What are some of those goals, and how can people out in the community that are watching or listening today uh, learn more and, and help out they, if they can? Yeah. So there, there's a a couple of um, a couple of um, answers to that question. Firstly, you know, our goal is to show um, that we believe a lot is possible despite, um, you know, uh, so-called disabilities affecting our lives. So a marathon or a half marathon or a 10K, I mean, these are great challenges for people that are um, have not done them before or are mobility impaired. So that's one thing, you know, that that's the message that we can get out there and have a real go in both in a marathon and in life. Secondly, is if people are interested to help us, our goal is to raise $100,000. And um, we've got a GoFundMe account, which they can access through our website, the kirkgibsonfoundation.org. And, um, and we, would, we would really encourage people and love people to support us financially to raise this $100,000. That's a wonderful thing. Second, uh, thirdly, if anybody is really interested in helping the foundation, and contributing their skills to the foundation, they can contact me through the website. And I'd love to talk to anybody that would like to volunteer their time to help us move the foundation and, and its activities forward. We're joined by Stephen Neal. He is the Managing Director and Board Member for the Kirk Gibson Foundation for Parkinson's. Joining us today on the Mega Cast. You can, again, find more information on their website, kirkgibsonfoundation.org. That is Kirk Gibson foundation.org for more information. Go to their homepage and right there on the homepage, there's information about Steve and, and Team 23's aim to not only run this marathon, marathon and raise awareness for Parkinson's and for the Kirk Gibson Foundation, but also to raise $100,000 in the process. You can join in on the, on the festivities and, and help them out by going to their website, kirkgibsonfoundation.org. They've already raised $8,220 out of that 
$100,000 with just 24 donations so far. So you can contribute to that. So plenty of time uh, left to contribute to that GoFundMe as they prepare for the Detroit Free Press Marathon on October 16th. Steve, how much of a factor did it play into to have uh, this fundraiser happen for this particular marathon in the city of Detroit where Kirk has made such a great contribution over his many years, and of course, this being his home state here in Michigan. Yeah, that, that's really important to us, and I, I think that's why there's been so much um, kind of, uh, you know, people joining Team 23 and and um, getting involved in this event, which we've been doing every year, and every year it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. You know, um, Kirk is a, he is a Michigan hero, um, but uh, I don't have that background and history of watching him play baseball for me, his heroism is in the way that he fights Parkinson's disease every day, but also the way that he really, um, he, he will talk to anybody and help anybody that reaches out to him that needs help. He is such a compassionate person. He's such a giving person of his time and his energy and, he, and his, his financial um, strength. So uh, he, is, he is a, he's a wonderful person. And so um, thank you so much for highlighting what we're doing with Team 23 and the marathon, and, and hopefully we can get some support today. Again, the website, KirkGibsonFoundation.org. KirkGibsonFoundation.org. Team 23 will be participating in this year's Detroit Free Press Marathon Sunday, October 16th. Uh, downtown Sunday, October 16th. If you want to go cheer on Team 23, another great way you can cheer them on from the race or from home is at KirkGibsonFoundation.org. Right at the top of their website, one team, one goal, defeat Parkinson's. Uh, there will be a link to click, not to click on to go to their GoFundMe as they try to raise $100,000 to go toward their battle against Parkinson's on their website, kirkgibsonfoundation.org. And you mentioned that Team 23, Steve, continues to grow. If people want to join Team 23, either uh, for this year or, or in the future for other uh, marathons and fundraising efforts, how can they go about doing that? Uh, and we'd love to have them for sure, yeah, th thanks. So uh, they can just contact us through the website and, um, and, and things are explained pretty well there. So that's the best way to get in touch with us. KirkGibsonFoundation.org slash contact for that. They have a fill out form right there, uh, as well as some frequently asked questions about the organization as well as KirkGibsonFoundation.org slash contact. We're joined by Stephen Neer. He is the managing director and one of the board members for the Kirk Gibson Foundation with us on today's edition of the Mag of the MegaCast. He is one of also the members of Team 23 will be running the Detroit Free Press a marathon on Sunday, October 16th uh, here in our local area. And Steve, beyond uh, the fundraiser here and, and the Detroit Free Press Mar Marathon, what are some other efforts that are currently being worked on by the Kirk Gibson Foundation to raise funds and raise awareness for Parkinson's here in Michigan? Yeah, so uh, the focus of the organization is, is really uh, centered on what we can do to bring these activity-based programs to um, Michigan. So we have been researching the market and, and what else is happening in the US uh, to do this and looking for best, best practice. So we want to provide best practice to people that do have Parkinson's disease here and uh, we're working on those programs now. So over the next couple of years, we'll be rolling out those programs into the, into the Michigan communities and provide um, that access free as as much as we possibly can, free to people that have Parkinson's. So these are exercise programs such as boxing, such as yoga, such as Tai Chi, such as, um, you know, vocal exercises and, and diaphragm strengthening exercises are very important for Kirk as a commentator um, that uh, really have been proven um, to help people um, fight off the effects of Parkinson's disease. So... The cure for the disease may be some time away yet, and there are many organisations, including Michael J. Fox's organisation, that are working on the cure. What we're trying to do is help people live with the disease and live a great life with the disease. And, and you know, Kirk's very inspirational in the way he personally goes about that. So that's the primary set of activities that we're focused on right now. The second thing is you spoke about awareness. So... We want people to be who have the disease and their carers and their families to be aware of the resources available to them and also to help them um, in as a support network so that they can understand there are other people going through the same journey as, as they are, not just as uh, the person with the disease, but also their caregivers and, and their families um, who can be you know, very, very heavily affected 
um, when this happens to a family member. So um, building a stronger support network and there are other organisations in the community in Michigan that are, are looking after uh, this as well, but, but joining with them and building a stronger support network. And then the third thing is to be an advocate in the medical and insurance industry, which is a longer term um, program for us. To, um, to look for better support for people that do have the disease. So there's very limited insurance company support um, right now. So if somebody is diagnosed with the disease, that insurance doesn't kick in for very long. So um, what we want to do is, is ex expand the cover that uh, people have and so that they, they can have their care funded for a longer period of time. So there are three things, exercise-based programs, being a support network and advocating for better financial support. We're joined by Steve Veneer. He is the managing director as well as a board member for the Kirk Gibson Foundation for Parkinson's joining us today on the Megacast. Again, you can contribute to Team 23, inquire about joining them at this year's Detroit Free Press Marathon as well as other future events, and of course contribute to the $100,000 fundraising goal for this Detroit Free Press Marathon happening on Sunday, October 16th by visiting KirkGibsonFoundation.org. KirkGibsonFoundation.org, it's right there as you go to their homepage, all the information you need to learn about their efforts at the marathon, Steve's efforts at the marathon, and their goals to raise $100,000 by October 16th. Help, help them out, KirkGibsonFoundation.org. Steve, anything else we should know uh, about the work being done at the Kirk Gibson Foundation at this time or anything else we haven't discussed today? I think we've covered it really well, and I, I really do appreciate your time. You know, it's a, a wonderful organization that is uh, really... I think it is it is spending money wisely. The money that, that, that we raise through the various events that we do and the, the wonderful uh, benefactors that we have. Um, so you know, we're very careful about where that money goes and, and how it's spent. We don't like to spend a lot of money on, on fundraising, but rather to put that money into action. And uh, we're going to do that increasingly with greater impact. There's 33,000 people that have Parkinson's disease in Michigan and um, so being able to impact their lives in a positive way is, you know, is a wonderful outcome for the organisation. And we're very driven by that. You know, Kirk is, is really increasing the strength of the team that's involved and uh, we're becoming more and more impactful, which is wonderful. Steve, appreciate your time. Thank you so much for telling us more about everything happening at the Kirk yeah. Gibson Foundation and, of course, uh, the, your efforts with the upcoming Detroit Free Press Marathon. Thanks, Todd. I really appreciate your time. Appreciate it as well. KirkGibsonFoundation.org for more information and to contribute to their current ongoing fundraiser as well as fundraising efforts in the future. KirkGibsonFoundation.org. We'll take a break on the Megacast. When we come back, we'll explore some of the fun events happening for the spooky season right here in Oakland County. Keith Aldridge from Canterbury Village joins us next. You're watching and listening to the Megacast. In the face of COVID-19, staying healthy is important. And now the same is true as we face the flu. Influenza has the potential to infect millions, putting lives and the healthcare system at risk. Fortunately, it's easy to protect yourself. The flu vaccine is safe and effective, and with COVID-19 still spreading, it's essential. To see how you can hit this virus head on, visit michigan.gov flu. Now that the vaccine is available for children five and up, why do you recommend it? kids are part of the community and they can spread COVID. We're seeing both healthy children getting sick from the virus as well as children with underlying health conditions. They can easily bring the virus home to other people that are vulnerable and make them sick as well. This vaccine can change that and keep children safe. It's essential that your children get vaccinated to protect them, to protect your families, and to protect those in the community around you. Let's savor these moments, made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the dining out going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date.
Welcome back to the MegaCast, our live, local, five days per week TV, radio, and streaming show about all things Michigan. I'm Tyler Keith. Learn more about our program on our website, civiccentertv.com slash megacast, where you'll find more information on all of our partnering stations across the Great Lakes State, including My Michigan TV. There you'll also find us on demand, full episodes and individual interviews as well, so you can watch the MegaCast on your time, at your own pace, and about all the topics that are most important to you. Joining us now on the MegaCast is uh, one of the curators of some great fun all throughout the year, each and every season here in Oakland County. Keith Aldridge is the owner of Canterbury Village and joins us once again on the MegaCast. Keith, thanks for being with us today. Yes, good morning. It's good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you too, me hearty, as I see you're dressed up <laughs> as, a pi as a pirate. It is uh, that time of the year we get into our costumes and start <laughs> celebrating the Halloween season. So tell us about all the festivities down at Canterbury Village. Let's start with the spooktacular family-friendly fun, fun that's happening every weekend this October, beginning this Friday. Beginning this Friday, yep. So we go 12 nights in October of our uh, Halloween stroll that we started, uh, what, about four years ago? And uh, it's really grown into something special and, and a great, uh, great evening for Oakland County families. Well, I should say Metro Detroit families, just not Oakland County. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, obviously, there's a lot of great uh, strolls around uh, our great city. We kind of feel ours is uh, up there with the best of them. Uh, you know, our light shows and our quality of actors are really second to none. And then obviously, you throw in the spookiness of the village. Uh, when it's in the evening, uh, and uh, it's it's pretty good stuff for, for kids and for families. And it's happening. It begins on Friday, October 7th. Tickets are on sale also uh, for your annual Hall Outdoor Halloween Wonderland Live and fest uh, festive attractions and experiences as well. There's really a whole lot of fun to, to be had at Canterbury Village all throughout the spooky season and throughout the fall as well. As people are looking for some outdoor fun, trying to you know keep things active as they get ready for the colder months of the year, and trying to expend some of that energy from their kids before they're cooped up inside all winter. Exactly. Obviously, we got Yates Cider Mill here, so in the fall time, who doesn't love a good uh, hot donut and some uh, warm cider? And uh, we have one of the best here at Canterbury with Yates Cider Mill, as I said, and then all the other great shops that we have here at Canterbury and. Yeah, I tell you what, I'm looking forward to this weekend. We got some cool new uh, new props and some new uh, new attractions for our Halloween stroll. We actually have a, a children's hay maze for the first time ever. So I'm really looking forward to that. And then we have a new uh, gothic kind of uh, scary wall with the ghosts and goblins that will be uh, uh, laser projected onto it. So I'm really looking forward to that one as well. So a couple of new cool attractions and plus, you know, when you have 35, 40 actors out, uh, you know, giving the kids a good time, it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, that's the, that's what's really interesting about these events at Canterbury Village is you guys really do go all in on these to make them fun and interactive in a variety of different ways. It kind of brings all those elements together of uh, a, a hayride, of you know, a corn maze, and also of a haunted house, kind of all into one, but in a way that's family fun and. Uh, able to be had by everybody that goes out to Canterbury Village, regardless of how spooky they're looking for October to be. You're correct. And obviously this Friday uh, is our big charity night with Jay Juniors. Obviously Jay Towers does a wonderful job with his charity and, and giving back to those uh, children that uh, are having some difficulties. And we've teamed up with him for the last few years. And Friday night is our big charity preview with Jay and so come out and support. Hopefully we can cut them a nice big check like we have in the in the years past. And um, most of the proceeds go to uh, Jay Towers for that evening. So we're looking forward to it once again. Yeah, if, you're, if you're not looking forward to it, uh, it might be time for you to walk the plank and, <laughs> and, and try some, something new for fun. We're joined by Keith Aldridge. He is the owner of Canterbury Village in Lake Orion, joining us on today's edition of the MegaCast. Of course, you can find more information about all their upcoming events as well as purchasing tickets in advance at CanterburyVillage.com. CanterburyVillage.com. And, of course, one of the favorite the favorite activities of the fall season for everybody in Michigan is going to their local cider mill, enjoying some tasty cider, uh, donuts, and other treats as well. And now they can do that at Canterbury Village. They don't have to travel to a cider mill that may be out of the way of their local area. They can go right to Canterbury Village at these events where you'll be joined by Yates Cider Mill. Tell us about that and what uh, kind of goodies people can get from Yates at your events. 
Well, obviously Yates, Yates is name in, in Oakland County. Uh, they're second to none with the cider mill. I know there's a couple of good ones, but Yates is up there with the best of them. Um, you know, obviously I have a preview to the uh, back kitchen. So those little tasty donuts coming off fresh and hot are, are pretty dang tasty, I would have to tell you. And then they got all kinds of great baked goods. And then obviously you got the, the cider chili or hot, uh, obviously now with it kind of cooling out, uh, getting cool out. Uh, the, the warm cider is a, a nice treat. So uh, come on out. They have a great, uh, great staff there. They take care of everybody. Uh, Miss Deanna runs a great show for the uh, Yates family. And it's, it's going to be a lot of fun here the next four weekends at Canterbury. Yeah, next four weekends, beginning this Friday, October 7th, it's their Halloween stroll. More information can be found CanterburyHalloweenStroll.com or CanterburyVillage.com, happening Friday through Sunday from 5.30 to 8 p.m. each and every day at Canterbury Village in Lake Orion. We're joined by Keith Aldridge, the owner of Canterbury Village, on today's Megacast. After we get through the Halloween season, it is right on, straight forward into the holiday season. It seems like once November 1st comes around, everybody's thinking about the holidays at the end of December, uh, and we know that Canterbury Village is thinking about that well before it is holiday season. What sort of fun's coming up this holiday season for families and individuals in our local area? Well, we have a great calendar, and yes, uh, the 31st of October comes, and then it seems like uh, November 1st, the, all the Christmas is up already. Wherever you go around town, it's pretty cool, transformation. Um, but we have lots of fun this year. Uh, we're going to have our big tree lighting ceremony on uh, November 18th, which is a Friday. That's a free event for families. Um, you know, last year we took our our fit our 45 foot tree to the next level, and uh, it's a dancing tree now with the, with the coolest light show ever, and uh, it's really become one of our staples. And uh, so we're looking forward to that. And then that weekend, the uh, November 19th and 20th, we have our Canterbury Coco Crawl, uh, which will be a lot of fun. And then uh, then the Halloween or ha Halloween, sorry, ho holiday stroll starts again on 11:23 which is really a spectacular light show. Uh, our team does a great job with the village. And then the next uh, weekend, we have our, our Canterbury cookie crawl, uh, which is Black Friday weekend. So come on out, vote for your best cookie, uh, what, um, and uh, have lots of fun. And then we got uh, Elf weekend, Dickens weekend, Ugly Sweater weekend. And then obviously we have a stroll, the holiday stroll uh, all, all month long. Uh, Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays as well. More information can be found on CanterburyVillage.com. That's CanterburyVillage.com. And right at the top of their page on, on CanterburyVillage.com, they do have links to both the Halloween stroll and the holiday stroll, so you can find more information. Uh, mark down all those dates on your calendar and choose which one or which ones you want to attend over the next several weeks and the next couple of months at Canterbury Village. Uh, Keith, I also want to talk to you about the different shops that are also at Canterbury Village. It continue to be a great place for people to shop and shop local all throughout the year. Uh, tell us about some of the shops that are still at Canterbury Village and maybe even other ones that may have come in in recent times. Well, actually, for the last two years, we've been sold out of uh, retail space, wow. um, so which is, which is great. We're full. And uh, we have some great vendors. Obviously, we have Yates. We have Fourth Coast Hard Cider Works, which makes their own hard cider here in Lake Orion. We have Scott's Farm General um store which has been with us uh for two years now a local family that's been in oxford for 150 years so come out and get your pumpkins and mums uh we probably have one of the best little local uh, clothing boutiques with the wooden tulip i mean it is it, it's a it's they do a great job I, you know obviously i'm not shopping for women's clothes but i i walk in there i'm like this is a really cool store uh we have easy bikes uh, which is electrical bike rentals and sales, uh, the nicest couple ever. And uh, <laughs> I can't believe how many electric bikes they sell. I mean, you talk about hitting the uh, right at the perfect time. I mean, people go crazy for that. Uh, in 2018, we started our Made in Michigan market. We have over 60 local small artists and vendors in our Made in Michigan market. Um, all, you know, handmade coasters, handmade t-shirts, all kinds of neat stuff. And then, uh, then we have uh, our six houses in the back, which are great little knickknack shops. Uh, and uh, it's just a great place to come and stroll and, you know, have a great family afternoon. 
and join uh, Keith and the team at Canterbury Village. At Canterbury Village, all throughout the fall, their fall hours, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. Yates Cider Mill will be there at 10 a.m. until 8 p.m. You can also find more information on all their shops and all their activities at CanterburyVillage.com. CanterburyVillage.com with uh, their location located on Jocelyn Road in Lake Orion. Keith, anything else for us or any other uh, activities coming up that we haven't discussed today that our audience should be marking their calendars for in the next few months? Yep, they should be. So lots of fun and exciting stuff at Canterbury. Come out and see our great uh, light displays and our, our, our actors really take it to the next level. Um, and uh, they do a great job. So I'm looking forward to the fourth quarter and the holiday season here at Canterbury. Well, we appreciate it, uh, Keith. Uh, you, you're joining us, telling us about all these fun upcoming programs and, and giving us a preview of what's to come at Canterbury Village. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. You as well. CanterburyVillage.com for more information. Their Halloween stroll begins this week Friday and runs every, every weekend now through the Halloween season. CanterburyVillage.com for more information. We'll take a break. On the other side, we'll talk to one of the many charities supported uh, by Share Detroit right here on the Megacast. Let's relish these moments, made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the festivals going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Can I ask you a question? Uh, Why do you want to get the COVID-19 vaccine? I don't like getting sick. The virus will die. It will be easy to not catch it. Keep my family safe and keep playing soccer. Because I love being vaccinated. What's your hope for everyone? I hope everybody gets the vaccine. To keep safe and strong. Be like happy, having fun everywhere. Everyone stay safe and hope you get the vaccine. Let's whoop it up for these moments, made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the cheering going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. In the face of COVID-19, staying healthy is important. And now the same is true as we face the flu. Influenza has the potential to infect millions, putting lives and the healthcare system at risk. Fortunately, it's easy to protect yourself. The flu vaccine is safe and effective. And with COVID-19 still spreading, it's essential. To see how you can hit this virus head on, visit michigan.gov flu. the mega cast our live local five days per week tv radio and streaming show about all things michigan i'm tyler keeft learn more about our program on our website civiccentertv.com slash megacast we'll find information on all of our partnering stations all throughout the state of michigan on tv on the radio on the web and find all of our full shows and individual interviews on demand Joining us now on the MegaCast is Rebecca Limbaugh. She is the executive director of Boys Hope, Girls Hope of Detroit and joins us now on the program. Rebecca, thanks for joining us today. Hi, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, glad to have you on to tell us about your organization. First off, uh, can you just give us an overview of, of what Boys Hope, Girls Hope of Detroit is and, and what you do to help people right here in our local area? Well, Boys Hope, Girls Hope's mission is to nurture and guide motivated young people in need to become well-educated career men and women for others. Um, our scholars come from a variety of backgrounds and there are barriers that prevent them from achieving their full potential. So what we do is that, like we provide all of the services necessary to get them to the next level. We are here to help eliminate those barriers, whether it's family, school, community, or any other challenges that they may face. Um, our team is actually committed to empowering young people by helping them become the best versions of themselves um, that they can possibly be. And so this is an organization that is not 
uh, necessarily local. It's, it is, of course, it has this local chapter, but it's connected to a national organization of Voice Hope, Girls Hope. So how does that connection help you fulfill your, your mission and, and have the resources needed to contribute to the problems that are individual to, to people in the Detroit area? Well, um, just to give you a little bit of history, um, Voice Hope Girls Hope was founded in 1974 by uh, in St. Louis by Father Paul Sheridan, uh, who believed that all children have potential, um, but there are barriers uh, that prevent young people from, you know, reaching their full potential. So he opened his first residential home in St. Louis um, in 1974. So since then, it has expanded, and we are now in 15 cities and states, including Guatemala and Mexico. So we're international now. So what our national office will do for us is to bring us all in one location to share best practices. We also offer scholarship assistance. They help us in that area as well. So we'll provide a portion of the scholarships and we'll talk a little bit, a bit more about all three of our programs soon, I hope. But what our network uh, headquarters do is just bring us all in one hub so we can continue to grow our programs in these 15 different cities and states and internationally. And you mentioned, Rebecca, that one of the, uh, at the crux of what Boys Hope, Girls Hope of Detroit does and what the, the national organization, international now organization does is to, is to overcome those gaps and those barriers yes. to education and to progress for these kids all across the Detroit area and around the world. So what are some of those barriers specific to Detroit and what are some of the ways that your organization helps to navigate these students, these young people around those barriers to achieve these goals and, and uh, you know, really tap into that potential that the founder of this organization truly believes every child has. Well, we offer three individual programs. And in these programs, we um, offer family support, school uh, assistance, community engagement, resources, there's a lot of challenges that young people face in the community, especially with family. Sometimes you have young people in the city of Detroit who really want to be successful, but they just don't know how to get there. You know, I was one of those students, actually. I was born and raised in Detroit um, with the similar barriers that our, our young people face. And sometimes they're just stuck in their community and they do not have the resources, exposure, uh, support, love, guidance that they need to be able to make it to the next level to be successful. That is what we offer. We offer that in three different ways. First, through our Hope House residential program. In this program, we have six girls who actually live in the house. And we provide wraparound services to these young people for whatever reason, um, maybe it's homelessness, uh, maybe is uh, just there's a family that has this family has too many people in the home and they can't focus on this young person, but she has dreams and goals. So we bring that child in that in our residential home and we provide those wraparound services to that young person. We also partner uh, with three schools in the city of Detroit to provide college prep support for three schools, 10 students each school. We provide the same services that we do in our residential home, which is a wraparound services, love, support, resources, guidance, exposure. Uh, we provide that to these young people um, in the schools. They just don't live with us. So same services, they just do not live in our home. And we provide those services after school. Um, we just um, partner with this wonderful organization here in Detroit called Save Detroit, where we're going to bring all three of our, our schools um, our students and our schools into this one location so we can provide the services together. And our third program is our collegiate support. What we found is when young people grow up in the inner city, they're only used to their surroundings and then the support that we give them. So we want them to go to college, we want them to be successful. So we follow them to and through college for the next four years, offering scholarships, the same love, support, connections, resources that we provide to our Hope House and our Hope Academy, we also provide to our collegians until they graduate with their bachelor's degree. And then we just ask them to come back and give to their community. All these, all of our services are free of charge. And you mentioned that you have a partnership in the college prep area and with those three schools in Detroit and of course, yes. Say Detroit also, which is a, a nonprofit uh, in yes. Detroit that's run by, of course, Mitch Album. Uh, 
And it's been interesting over the last several years, especially during the pandemic, to see the ways that nonprofits and charities began to partner together even more than before to provide the services that they provide, but also to bridge some of those gaps in our societies that in our society that really became that much more inflated and that much more visible to people that maybe weren't uh, paying as much attention or maybe it was just slipping by them in the past. Speak to that and how much partnership and community partnership really means to Boys Hope, Girls Hope of Detroit and its ability to fulfill its mission and, and provide these resources to kids that really need it and, and then when they do receive it, are able to have such amazing outcomes as a result. Um, I'm going to tell you, I, I love the whole old African, um, you know, statement that says that it takes a village. It truly does. Um, we at Boys Hope, Girls Hope, I am a mental health therapist by degree. And so it's important that we focus on the mental health of young people. And we have actually revised our curriculum to focus on mental health. Um, and what Say Detroit and the Union, which is another nonprofit, and now Mary Grove, we just moved some uh, our offices into Mary Grove, so we can be around, be in that hub of other nonprofits um, and community organizations that can help support what we do. So we want to make sure that with the partnership with Say Detroit, the Union, Mary Grove, is that we have this wraparound. I talk about wraparound services a lot because that's what our young people need to be successful. So we're exposing them to every opportunity, uh, whether it's financial literacy, whether it's mental health, whether it's uh, college tours, uh, to make sure that they're on the campuses, actually filling their cells on a college campus. Um, a lot of mental health work, a lot of life skills. So we partner to make sure that our scholars have these wraparound services. You can find more information and, and help them fulfill the, this mission and, and provide these services at bhghdetroit.org. That is bhghdetroit.org to learn more about Boys Hope, Girls Hope of Detroit. We're joined by its executive director, Rebecca Limbaugh, on today's edition of the Megacast. I want to also give an opportunity to talk about some of the ways that people can contribute to this organization with their time and, and of course, financially to help you with uh, with your goals and with your future. But one of those ways is to participate in your annual Festival of Hope. Can you tell us about the Festival of Hope and when that is and how people can participate? Yes. Um, Festival of Hope is something, it's, it's, that's my baby. <laughs> I created it. I've been at Boys Hope Girls Hope since 2013. And I was sitting at the table with uh, our young scholars and a few of my team members, and I say, you know, so what do you guys, we have to serve community because I don't care where you come from, your, your background, your economic status, is that like there's always someone who has a little bit less than you. I want to make sure that we teach our scholars the importance of giving back to their community. And we talked about it for a while, and then at, the, at one of our residential homes, we actually started to bring our young people together and ask them, how do you plan a community service event? And our scholars planned this event and we had maybe, we had the first event in our, in our residential home, maybe about 40 or 50 people. Um, and then now here it is, maybe like nine years later, it has grown to now we're in the community. We service every single area, east side, west side. And what we do is a two day event um, the Friday is more of a Black History celebration where we bring all our partners, parents, scholars, young people, everyone is involved in, in Boys Hope, Girls Hope, and our young people, they actually um, plan and they implement this day. Um, there's activities, there's a lot of fun. And then the second day is the actual community service. And we come together with our partners and we just serve the community. Uh, care packages, we feed them, there's activities, there's just, just a, a fun day um, specifically for the community. And what I found in our young people is like they truly love to give back to their community. So it's it's been big for us for the next, uh, past nine years, actually. You can find more information by visiting bhghdetroit.org, yeah. bhghdetroit.org dot org slash festival dash of dash hope or just go over their events and news and select festival of hope to learn more information uh we're joined by rebecca limbaugh the executive director of boys hope girls hope of detroit on today's edition of the megacast rebecca i do want to give you some time to talk about how kids and families can get can get their young ones involved 
in this organization and, and get them access to these resources in those three key areas, residential, college prep, and support services, because it's one thing to provide those services to people that uh, that you find that you go out to and that you reach out to, but how? But if someone is in need or if people are in need of these services, how can they best uh, reach out to Voice Hope Girls Hope of Detroit? Well, we can. Uh, we're on every social media outlet: um, Facebook, Twitter, <laughs> um, you know, Instagram, and of course our website. Um, and then there is a link there that you can find out about our services. But I am very grassroots. I am in the community. I am talking to our partners. I am in homeless shelters. I'm wherever you can find young people. I'm a young. I'm, I'm a youth advocate, actually. And I, I'm in schools. Wherever you can find these young people, I reach out to them. So we're in the community uh, talking about who we are and 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 the services that we can provide to young people in the city of Detroit, as well as on our social media outlet. More information can be found bhghdetroit.org. Again, it's their website, bhghdetroit.org for more information. At this time, what are some of the most important ways, the most significant ways that people out in the community that want to support your mission and your efforts in the Detroit area supporting these kids, how can they best contribute to Boys Hope, Girls Hope of Detroit at this time? Oh, my goodness. Yes, you can go to your, my website. You can reach out to me um, individually, 248-342-9983. But we are in need, it really, our services are free of charge to all of our young people and our college students. For our residential home, I mean, volunteers to come in and prepare meals for our, for our scholars, um, resources, um, any type of resources you can provide to run a house, whatever you need to run your household, we need those same items in, in, in our household um, for six girls, <laughs> you know? So we're always looking for hygiene products, uh, we're looking for school supplies. We're looking for anything you can provide for us to help us run our house effectively. For our academy programs, of course, always school supplies. We're in need of school supplies. A lot of the times the families of our, our young people are suffering as well. So we're always um, trying to prepare food baskets for our families, Christmas gifts, um, just whatever we can do to help our young people thrive and to help them feel comfortable about being with us, knowing that we're supporting their family as well. Collegiate support, we're always looking for mentors. Um, we're always looking for individuals to help us come and put together care packages to send to our college students. We have 95 students in college right now. So we're trying to, we're very small here in Detroit. We're growing, but we're very small. We have a staff team of maybe 12, but we're doing some really powerful work and we're servicing um, our, our three programs. So volunteers, uh, mentors, uh, individuals that can provide um, care packages for our collegians, whatever we can do um, to help them thrive. More information, of course, can be found on the website bhghdetroit.org or by visiting sharedetroit.org where they're one of over 300 charities and nonprofits supported on the Shared Detroit platform. Again, sharedetroit.org or bhghdetroit.org uh, is there a direct website to find more information on the resources and, and get in contact with them. If you'd like to get involved, volunteer, provide your expertise and your care to this organization. And of course, to donate and contribute to their organization and, and give them uh, more of the means that they need in order to provide these services to kids and families in Detroit. Rebecca, just another couple minutes with you before we'll say goodbye today. Anything else we haven't discussed yet uh, that people should know about Boys Hope, Girls Hope of Detroit or that they should be keeping an eye out for from your organization in the near future? Yes, keep an eye out for our Festival of Hope for sure. I mean, it's a big, oh, it's a big deal for us here. We're very proud of it. Our scholars are very proud of it. Um, we normally hold that event February the 9th. We are launching our academy program on October the 17th at Sage Detroit. So that's something big to look out for. And our boys' house. We are trying to reopen a boys' house similar to our girls' house. Um, and so we look out for our boys' house. We'll be needing some support for that as well. Okay, more information can be found on all this at bhghdetroit.org or visit sharedetroit.org as well to learn more about Boys Hope, Girls Hope of Detroit and over 300 other charities and nonprofits across various sectors all across our local area. Rebecca, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate Have it. Have a great day. Yes, you as well, bhghdetroit.org 
is their website for more information. That is going to do it for this Tuesday edition of the Megacast. I want to give a big thank you to everybody that joined us on this edition of the show. If you're just tuning in or you, just, or you missed most of the program today, uh, you can always find us on demand on civiccentertv.com slash Megacast. Watch our full episodes back on your time uh, at, and uh, at your own pace or individual interviews. If there's certain topics that are of importance or of interest to you, you can watch us any way you want on civiccentertv.com slash Megacast. There you'll also find information about ways you can watch us live and live to tape in your local area as well. Highly encourage you to also travel over to our local news page on civiccentertv.com for up-to-date info on COVID-19 from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, as well as the Oakland County Health Division, as well as news stories making headlines in every region of Detroit, uh, of Detroit Grand Rapids, Lansing, and all regions of Michigan. Uh, in a variety uh, from a variety of different outlets. Big thank you as well to our crew, Calvin Brown and Jared Clark at the studio of My Michigan TV, as well as our producer, Larry Nyland. That does it for what, this Tuesday edition of the Megacast. We'll return soon with a new episode.